Hi, Tsepo. Cameron from Durban, Cameron Vanguard. So obviously the Capitec investment for you was instrumental for your growth journey. I mean, I was just doing the quick maths. You invested 10% for 30 million and obviously you've trimmed that position down to 7.7% as Alec said. So that's worth over 18 billion now. My question is specific to Capitec. You've obviously trimmed your position. What do you see the future of Capitec like compared to other banks? And do you see it maintaining its competitive modes? And where do you see Capitec in the next 10 years or so? Uh, luckily, I don't sit on the board of Capitec. I'm just like any other investor. Uh, I had the fortune of sitting on a Capitec board, I think uh, initially for about four years or so. Then like, I think when my in engagements increased, then I sort of like stepped down. But I had the fortune of seeing the Capitec management and culture at play and the way they look at things and then the way they focus and then the way, the way they, they use technology and uh, also the way they focus on the customer and the value add and the value for money proposition. I think they will continue to do that. I think for many years, if you look at what they did, they, they didn't, they just focused on delivering what they were very good at to the customer. They were very gung-ho in terms of like that. They were not stuck with uh, legacy sort of like, you know, issues that the rest of like the, the banks had. They only had one head office in Stellenbosch, unlike, you know, the other banks into like all the legacy issues they had to do, even from a technology point of view. And if you look at what they've done in the past, I think three years, in terms of like the additional sort of like, you know, value propositions they've offered to their sort of like customers, you can see that they've really like, you know, you know uh, changed and kept up to uh, uh, date with being like, you know, uh, uh, offering more value to their, to their customers. And, you know, in, uh, like in 20, what, it was about 2015, I think the, the price was about, what, 400, about 400 bucks or so. And then like, you know, I had to select chairs, like, you no know, to restart again and build up a new platform on the back of that. And people are wondering, like, no, but it's already had its run. For me, it was more of a long-term play and, I got a problem of loyalty too, so it worked for me. And then, again, it was not. And then, uh, but I think that you have a team that's still sitting with more flexibility, and you have a team of guys who've worked with each other for a long time. We've been able to also like transition, you know, management and CEO, and keep. Uh, that innovative sort of like culture going. And if you look at the transition, I think from Michiel to, uh, to, to, to Rian Stassen to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to Harry now, and then uh, if you also like look at now, after about like what, 22 years or so, like you know, um, the, the current CFO is going, and then you're having a new CFO going. They've, and, and the depth of their uh, knowledge about the customer and, uh, and the brand and what the brand, I think they will keep that up for a while. But in the continuous sort of like, uh, and what they also in the background are looking at, I think they will be able to do that. You know, if at the time, you know, when I sat on the board, you know, you'd have Rian telling you about the competitors and what they are doing and what in the next six months or two year, which of the competitors would like, you know, would have folded over because of what they're doing in the market. So their assessment and uh, appreciation of what they're doing, I think is very much, and the use of data and information, I think, that, I think they will do that for a while. And I think to the extent that the other sort of like banks in the current market are failing to uh, catch up, it still, uh, Capitec still represents value. They have now bought uh, Mercantile Bank, so therefore like you know, increasing their value proposition. And I'm a big believer 
in like you know the small and medium business financing sector and i think you know when they get that sector right i think that's the next explosion so like in the south african so like sense and i'm a big supporter of them having done that because i think south africa needs that it's like you know if you look at what them what capitec has done for like you know uh, opening up banking for, for, for the mass market. And if they can do that for the mass market in business, imagine what that can do for South Africa. So for me, that's a big deal. So in that regard, I'm a big supporter still. And just for that good part, I, I think I remain a, 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 a supporter and a holder in that regard. Cameron, in our, in our last business portfolio, uh, I said that the big mistake that we made in the last few years is not adding Capitec and transaction capital into that portfolio. We're going to make, we're going to fix that soon. Uh, and at these levels, uh, th that that would be from our assessment anyway, is that Capitec has still got a long, long way to go. There's another thing I like about Capitec. I think at the center, it's got a very focused uh, group of a core that is holding together. I think there's one other bank which had the core is holding together. Look at the other banks. My take is that at the core, they don't have that. So I think in itself, that is an opportunity. <laughs> Always looking long term. Final question. No hands? Can I have the final question then? Oh, there is, one. there is a hand here, right. Sepo, hello, my name's Georgie Carter. Um, and I, I couldn't let the opportunity pass, but many of us in this room are small entrepreneurs, unlike you. Um, so I'm, I'd like I'm very to ask. Small. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to ask your opinion on what advice you would give to us in terms of what opportunities you still see in South Africa if we did want to keep money here and if we did want to invest in the future, the long-term future of South Africa. Uh, I told you my father was Chinese, right? <laughs> So I, I come from that sort of like you no know, small, small business. And when, 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 I, when I meet my father was Chinese, like, you know, we, he was not really Chinese. That like, you no, know, we used to run five feet at home. So that's why. <laughs> so the, and, and it, uh, I used to like maybe drive taxi during the holidays and stuff like that. I believe South Africa needs a big focus on small and medium business growth. There's a whole lot of opportunities, and I think we need to be sort of like uh, given much more support than what it's than what it's getting right now, especially from a capital access, from a uh, uh, point of view, and. But it's also like going to take a lot. It, it's also difficult because I think we also do need, I think, from a public sector, from a government point of view, to get its act together to ensure that the sector, but, the, the, the but sector. What does Georgie you know, do? Right? What from her side? Mm -hmm. Forget, forget the. You know, you yeah. look at the landscape. You say yeah. you got to deal with the cards you got. The cards you got. You can't wait for government. We'll yeah. wait forever. Yeah. What what advice would you give her? In terms of, I think the opportunities for, for, for small business, well, well, what would I, well, what would I invest in, or what, what is it that I would start? I'm just trying to understand. Okay, uh, I, I'll tell you my, my yeah. take, and then maybe we can, we yeah. can build on that. Mm. My take is that if you're an entrepreneur, South Africa is the mm. land of great opportunity. Mm -hmm. If you work for a corporate, South Africa is not such a great place. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you're a professional, maybe we'll say, okay. But I can understand when people emigrate, I don't like it. I actually hate it because we've got so few people.
people who pay a bulk of the tax in the country. But if they immigrate because they're going to be, uh, I mean, poor old bankers, you know, they're going through the bank organization hierarchy. Yeah, I get that. But if you're an entrepreneur and you immigrate from this country, you've got, it, you've got rocks in your head. Because the opportunities exist everywhere. Everywhere. And I think that's what you've shown as well. In the, in the way that you scan the landscape. I know Tepo is an entrepreneur. I mean, he's, he's very modest. But entrepreneurs are people who go all in on things. Mm. They, they, take a, they take a calculated risk. And I think that's really the kind of insights that, mm. that she wants to get into that part of your brain. Mm. I, yeah, I, I tend to sort of like look for, uh, for, for, for things where, where people... I don't know. Maybe like I, my 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 appetite for risk tends to be a bit, I think, higher. But it's not that I think it's not necessarily that the risk is higher. I, I tend to perhaps go and look at what, uh, uh, what is it that perhaps that people are not looking at, which could be a bit, you know, on the left flank, which then represents uh, a, an opportunity. What is it that I can do differently to what? the rest of the market is not looking at. What I, I, I tend to also say, bring a little bit of my, I put my, my soul and heart into things. You know, my own differentness in, into a factor. So that like, you know, I think that uh, everything is, 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 is copyable these days. You, you can copy things very quickly. A, a, a manufacturing process, a marketing gimmick, a, a whatever. And like, you know, to get that sort of like comparative edge, is that what is it that I can do that makes me or that process a bit that unique that I can sustain that competitiveness longer than anybody else? Because whatever I'm going to do, you know, I'm competing with everything and anybody from anywhere, and even a guy from China that I don't know or have never sort of like met. So I tend to like look at that thing wherein I can bring in some small element that gives me an edge that like brings a, a unique proposition that is just outside of that. Because, you know, everything is being disaggregated to its lowest sort of like uh, common sort of like thing. So therefore, what is it that I can compete that you can't get from Google for free? from that point of view, and that I can do for value in, in that regard. And, and the other, uh, just to close off with it, uh, the other great differentiator mm. is thinking long term. Mm. The world thinks short term. South African, South African business thinks incredibly short term. Many businesses that you compete with, they're just seeing how quickly they can make money and shovel it offshore. Mm. The long term nature of an, an entrepreneur is a builder. It's a long-term nature. It's, it's yes, your risk mm. tolerance has to be higher, but, but I've seen that mm. from you. Is that mm. you, know, you know, it, it, if you take a view of five years, you're already differentiating yourself from every single competitor in your field in this country. Mm. And that's why I, I feel so strongly that it's a great place to be yeah, in I business. Think, well, what, what infrastructure investing has taught one is that how then do you put up something that must be there and be sustainable even beyond, even beyond you. And uh, it has also filtered into everything, the choosing of, of partners long term that you don't lose value. The, so I think that long term play thing, and it also like even makes you much more circumspect in then choosing that this I will work with and this I won't work with. Uh, so I, I think that for, for has, has been one. So that long term, that's true. It's uh, uh, and also because like it makes it a bit longer to choose some things, but then it like uh, it, it tends to be a differentiator as opposed to, like an, a quick in and out sort of like view. But and it's difficult in a very turbulent environment or a very volatile environment like South Africa, where it's like say. You know, you're always anxious about getting in and out, but it, it's a discipline, I think, which in the long term, sort of like, I think, tends to make you win the game, the war, yeah. because you tend to, like, you know, uh, put your 
planning in a way that uh, out 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 uh, out lives out runs your competitor from a planning point of view in terms of like sustainability. Tepo, thank you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. <laughs>